Hello everyone, I am Advocate Suleiman Bimani and I welcome you to the Citizen Justice Forum video channel. Our mission is to empower Indian citizens by sharing knowledge about their fundamental rights as specified in the Constitution of India. If you are watching this video for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a distinct honor of hosting a renowned personality in the field of law and jurisprudence. Mr. Vino Chabra is not only an eminent advocate, but also the prolific author of the Czech, uh, Czech Law Reporter Bombay and numerous other books delving into the integrity of Czech dishonor cases. It is indeed a privilege to have him with us today and we are deeply grateful that he has taken some time out of his busy schedule to share his knowledge and insight with our audience in the exclusive interview mr chavra will shed light on the subject of why check dishonor cases often result in dismissal and the accused get acquitted before we dwell into this enlightening session we kindly request all the viewers your support by clicking the like button to show your appreciation for Mr. Vinod Chabra and the valuable knowledge he is going to impart with us today. Further, let's extend a warm virtual welcome to our distinguished guest, Mr. Vinod Chabra. Thank you. You can start. Thank you, Mr. Suleiman Sahib. Mr. Suleiman Sahib is like my younger brother. He's not only advocate for me. We are very close by heart and mind. He is a very genius person in all respect, in all corners. So it's my great opportunity at the very outset, I express my deep roots expressions that I am given, I am being given a golden opportunity to be a part of their uh, regularly running seminars for the purpose of extending benefit to the citizens as well as to the lawyers fraternity. So far today, my topic is concerned that is restrained and restricted to the that why the so many complaints are dismissed even after having truthful case of the complainant. The complainant who knocked the door of the court and fight for several years, despite of that at the fag end of the case, his, his, his complaint is dismissed and accused is acquitted without facing any harm. There are certain reasons, we can't confine this, this in one particularly narrow sphere that this is one or the several reasons. There are thousand reasons, but standard sort of reasons I have confined in, in a queue, keeping in view the limitation of the time today, we are going to confine only in this, those particular 18 parts, those are the prime reason. So I think if the complainant or his respective advocates take into care all these 18 subjects before drafting the, the complaint, I think the result would be quite vice versa. Recently, just I was reading a judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court in its judgment para number 58 Rajesh, Joni, Rajesh Soni, that is a quite recent judgment. In that judgment, the Honorable Supreme Court, their lordship have mentioned the quotation of one Albert Ellison. Albert Ellison, what says? He says that if I am given 60 minutes in order to solve a problem, if I am given 60 minutes in order to solve a problem, I will take 55 minutes in order to understand the problem. And then now I will take only 5 minutes to solve the problem. So we are also coming in the, that narrow sphere if before drafting, I myself is a professional advocate. It is well said by someone that a wheeler is best to know where the shoe pinch. So far the factum position is concerned, our client is supposed to have much, much knowledge than that of the advocate. He just passed upon us the facts and we have to cover the, in the legal Language. sphere. So there are, no, I have confined certain points. First of all, I would like to highlight each and every point and then if the time The slide is going to be posted till then. Let me introduce Mama Dabzal, who is a reformist 
एंड एसोसिएट ऑफ छापरा रिचा पांडे सो शी इज ऑल्सो एन प्रैक्टिसिंग एडवोकेट शी ऑल्सो यू नो स्पेशलाइज इन वन थर्टी एट एंड इन फैमिली लॉज ऑल्सो सो दो आर सीकिंग रिलीफ इन मैट्रीमोनियल डिस्प्यूट लाइक डिवोर्स और द चाइल्ड कस्टडी दे कैन ऑल श्योरली अप्रोच हर नाउ वी आर जस्ट वेटिंग फॉर द स्लाइड टू स्टार्ट सो दैट वी कैन कंटिन्यू विद द सेशन एंड then in the end we will have question and answer session so over to you mr shabra bharat yes sir yes sir what is happening now what is happening here it will be here in this point points we have portrayed those are the prime reason in one or the other cases ultimately resulted and consequences in to dismissal of the complaint the first point in nutshell i will explain here but uh, rest of the time if uh, for i will go into the depth the, the first point is untruthful claim false claim there are two types of complainants who knock the door of the court first is the very honest person and the second are unscrupulous complainant who know despite of having best knowledge that i am not entitled for the claim i am going to to claim but still he filed the complaint the overall results that i have come to the conclusion that 138 is the outcome of entitlement versus liability if i am not entitled to claim any amount that is particularly mentioned is part of the act the opposite party accused is not liable liable to pay so entitlement like and liabilities are in other sense are the two part of the same coin so if i am not entitled for any any sum then the accused door of the check is not liable so this is the one point untruthful claim versus uh, untruthful claim and false claim the next question is technical questions there are so many technical questions that can not be confined in a, in a very short short of span of time because the 138 is itself is pertaining to certain technicalities law of limitation even premature post mature time barred complaints uh, concealment of facts certain documents in the hands of the accused party but those are not portrayed in the complaint so that those are the technical questions if that is that comes in the knowledge of the court during the course of the trial the ultimately fate of the the complaint come to it in next event the next question is very important want of prosecution what is called want of prosecution want of prosecution in the other sense we said when the complaint is dismissed for not appearance of the complainant and as well as of his advocates it is well said by the law that law always help the vigilant and not not the sleepers if we if the complaint complainant itself is he is not uh, take care of his case so and his advocate is also not taking legal step so ultimately the case would be end in smoke that would be end in for want of prosecution next next is procedural assault i will define in later on procedural de procedural defaults 
are like that when your complainant is bound to follow certain steps or certain direction of the court and he fail to follow the instruction of the client that is called procedural assault on and only on that score not on merits of the case not on the personal law because of only procedural uh, uh, procedural aspect the complaint is dismissed that is called procedural assault detail i will go in detail in the next reverse owners reverse owners is the very golden principle doctrine of the section 138 reverse owners means when the is is a provision under section 139 of the ni that fully help the complainant it means when the drawer has issued a check to the complainant law presume that he has issued the check in order to discharge his liability so the presumption in favor lies in favor of the complainant but once the complainant put into the witness box and the accused put certain questions or placed on record certain documents those rebut the presumption and once the accused is establish the rebut of presumption by preponderance of evidence or probable defense then rever- onus against reverse upon the complainant to establish his case that is called reverse onus we will go in detail on later on concealment again and again the all all, all all honorable court of supreme court repeated that once you knock 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 the door of the court if you want equity you do equity must must go to the court with in clean hand any concealment if detected by the court during the course of the trial the ultimately complainant is the loser next higher amount tax higher amount tax is one of the law a days very normal ground for dismissal of the complaint when i know my entitlement i being a person i know the i am going to file a case against the b i know the b liability is of 7 lakhs but in check my hand there is of 10 lakhs despite of having 3 lakhs that should, that ought to be deduction from that the 10 lakhs i file the case for the 10 lakh 10 lakhs and that is if the accused at appropriate stage or cross examination and he placed no regard any iota of evidence that he has already paid the 3 lakhs so his outstanding liability in the prevailing scenario is of 7 lakhs so the, in that that uh, sphere the court will come to the conclusion that it is an higher amount debt and the case would be dismissed only this score alone next limitation limitation is a very very important factor and part of the 138 in every sphere there is a 130 138 there is a limitation comes into play when the check return from the bank the complainant the true pay is bound to issue the notice within a specified time of 30 days asking the drawer of the check to make the payment under section 130b that is a statutory notice that is required to be served by the drawer uh, complainant to the drawer if the complainant then fails to make the payment then only the next step of filing the complaint would be come into force that we will discuss later on parallel civil remedy i have specifically scribed a separate article on this issue civil remedies parallel must be filed by the complainant because civil remedies and 138 both can run simultaneously in criminal case 138 if the accused unfortunately is died the case is come to end the case is abated but in civil matter it is not like this there are other 100 benefit for filing the civil case simultaneously that i will explain Later, link missing. In order to constitute the complaint one thirty eight, there are several links that, that in uh, layman language or in ordinary language we call it that is called ingredients of one thirty eight. There are five or four ingredients that if one of it, the statutory ingredient if one of it is even missing, the whole case went into the well. next next is signature and drawn of the check by disputant when specifically a served a notice to the b 
draw that and be in response of the reply say that I have not signed the check and check is disputed as per the draw of the check from the very avenue show then onus is highly upon the shoulder of the complainant to prove the signature of the drawer by producing any cogent evidence or similar evidence or producing into handwriting expert. Structure of complainant, structure of complainant means the formation of the complainant in a latest judgment the state high court said that the accused can take several u turn but the complainant has only one stand, once a stand, always a stand. So while structure of the complaint, the complainant should be very aware, his advocate should be very aware that whatever is going to be stated, that should be once and last. Next. Choice of advocates. On this score, I would like to, uh, I will uh, have some time in order to explain the judgment itself, the Bombay High Court judgment says about the choice of advocates. Next. Perverse of Perverse not absolute. This is very interesting and laughing subject. Perverse of procured order. Perverse means when the general trial court passed the order against the way of the evidence. Evidence says something else and the order judgment says something else. That is called perverse. But procured order is very in laughing sense. There is very, 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 very 0.01% chances of the procured order. Procured order when the Judge has passed the order, not in the light of the facts of the file, but of otherwise that is called procured order. Uh, abatement of complaint, death of the accused. It is very simple, once the uh, 138 uh, is turned to come, come to end when the uh, accused is dead uh, and his legal here is even can, cannot be paid. Uh, made party. As earlier I have said, the benefit of the uh, civil cases. In civil cases, the, if the accused is that right, his years can be made pa made party and claim can be put there upon their shoulder, but uh, in 130 it is not so. Defecto notice is the foundation. Defecto notice means the purpose of the notice, 138B statutory notice is just to intimate the or that the check issued by you in order to discharge liability was pre presented, that is returned back for the reason assigned by the annexed memo. There, there might be several reasons, but every reason is no equally treated by the Supreme Court. 138 is made out. Defecto notice we will ask when there is omnibus notice. The, that would, uh, we will discuss later on. Parties to the complaint, 140 especially. Section 141 is very interested and in, it, it pertains to the company only company partnership firm. Whenever company is made party and company is liable as accused, then section 1301 comes into play. Uh, we will discuss on later on. Exhibit not proofs. The Supreme Court says exhibits are very important. The new lawyers Sometimes not new trials, I am uh, just I am talking about few persons, few persons are handling their case in person. They just place on the documents and uh, expect the court to mark a zip. Just marking of a zip in itself is not the proof of document. Supreme Court says that uh, every document, its contents, it is admissibility should be properly proved. Then the document will be exhibited and read in evidence and then that would be admissible. admissible. Otherwise, mere exhibit is not enough. Thank you.
Or you know who are coming into little depth of the all points we have already discussed one by one. The first one is untruthful claim, false claim, and frivolous claim. Where complainant is holder, but not bona fide holder. There is a lot of difference between the holder and bona fide holder. Or actual pay. There is no direct nexus, no privity of contact or third party check without proper authority of endorsement, extortion, or holder by foul means or uh, taking the help of the police or muscle men organization in all metropolitan cities. It is no a common approach that the pay of the check approach a muscle men organization and they by using the force, foul force, compel the accused the, to make payment to the pay holder. If the accused during the course of his defense or during the course of cross-examination, if he is established that this check is the outcome, not, not the outcome of his pre-consent, rather this check was obtained by him by putting neck upon his, uh, putting knife or, upon his neck. He was forced by the circumstances in the prevailing scenario that they muscle men compelled me to issue, the, issue that check. This alone defense is more than sufficient to wash the total case of the. Similarly, in the police case, the role of the police, whenever the, the accused established before the court of law that he was called in the police station and paid by putting undue influence, put pressure upon me to sign upon certain document upon, uh, and also upon the impugned check in question. This is a arrest admissible and acceptable probable defense and all that the case would be went into wash if this defense is established by the accused. Yes. So we'll start with the question answer sessions, right? Uh, one of our viewers is asking, my friend and business associate has a false case of check bounce case filed in court. The business partner forged a check with false signature and filed the case. After two hearing, now he has agreed for a out of court settlement and expects financial payout. How do we close this and ensure he does not reopen the case? Yeah. See well, what he wants that the complaint is that he has taken out the check, forged the signature, and filed 138 case. Now there is a talk of out of court settlement and expects financial payout and it could be paisa deke wo place ban karne ka. How do we close this case? Yani in this scenario, if we close the case, bhi karte hai, to we want to ensure that he does not reopen the case again. See, now he says, my friend and a business associate has a false case of check bounce case filed in court against him. The business partner, the yani partner, tha, business partner okay. usne forged check, kar liya, check, forged the check with false signature okay. and filed the case. And now he wants to settle out of the court, but they want to make sure that he doesn't open the case again. So in this scenario, the only option is remain to, to get a detailed MOU from the concerned persons that he won't misuse in this scenario. Okay. And uh, once he withdraws the case, then uh, 138, there is a limitation period, right? Once he, the case is withdrawn, can he file the case again? No, he can't file the, the case again. Once he, once he withdraws the account of the settlement, once a settlement, mm -hmm. always a settlement. Yeah. So, and there is uh, uh, one more question. Uh, how many checks can we file in a complaint? One, two, three, suppose multiple checks have been issued to me, like 10 checks. So, can I come? 
compile all the 10 checks in one complaint and in one notice? No, no. You, you, several checks you can't file in one of, one of the complaint. Maximum limit is three. Okay. So, in the when I'm issuing a notice also, so I have to issue separate notices or one notice for the 10 checks and then file complaint for three, three if checks? All, if all the 10 checks are all, all are the outcome of the same transaction, then yet you can issue the only one, one, notice. one notice. But if the transaction is different, then uh, cause of action is separate, then notice is separate. Okay. No, but uh, filing of the complaints now, the cause of action is same. He has given me, say, one word like rupees check, 10 checks he has given me, right, for the same cause of action. So, in my notice, uh, should I send only uh, notice for 3-3 three, three checks or all the 10 checks together and file a separate uh, complaint for I, the, I would the like three. to advise there is no harm to file a separate notice. Okay. Because that is not fatal, but vice versa might be fatal. Okay. Omnibus notice of 10, uh, 10 transactions, 10 different checks, that might be better, but separate notice is not at all better. Okay. So, it, it has to be a separate notice. Now, uh, there is one more question, that is, partnership firm in good faith transferred money through RTGS to CA to KGST. Okay. CA misused the amount, transferring the amount to his sister concern. How many checks can be, uh, one, we, that we answer? The bank branch which gave the loan to home buyer yeah so let's finally the ca admits that he is guilty and gave three post dated checks with assurance that he will repay the amount misused by him now due to failure on the part of the ca the partnership firm compared to pay penalty interest along with gst to government by borrowing money from friends the amount is very large and it is in crores whether the post dated checks given by the CA amounts to his legal liabilities under Section 131 Act. CA or advocates and their clients, they both are having a very fiduciary relation, relation of trust. If a client of the CA have paid him certain amount and that is a huge amount on account of to pass GST, but he misused the same amount for his personal use. And secondly, he is admitting the liability. So, not only simply 138 is maintainable, 138 is prima facie maintainable when he is admitting the claim. In this this case, even I would suggest to uh, go uh, next cursive step for even uh, filing 420 because the ingredients of the 420s are prima facie may be proved. Because from the very inception, while taking the money for the purpose of GST and he keeping that amount in his check, in, in his pocket, and he don't pass to the, the government GST, this is prima facie shows his. It's better by intention. Yes. So, in addition to 138, I will ask for uh, criminal case as well. Okay, now uh, see, many people take a home loan, right? And the project gets stalled. But the EMIs, they have to keep on paying, otherwise, there are civil courts for it. But what happens? The project is stalled in 2015. This is a practical case the, which we have got in uh, this thing. Now, the property is in Mumbai. The branch which sanctioned the loan also is in Mumbai. And the check was also deposited in Mumbai. But the 138 case and warrant has been issued from Mandawa. So, what remedy does that I think the aggrieved home buyer has? Uh, I think the questioner is asking about the territorial jurisdiction of the court. In the month of May 2015, a ordinance was passed by the government of India, so far confining the territorial jurisdiction. After passing that ordinance, in May 2015, the only territorial jurisdiction lies with the where the home branch of the pay is existing. Prior to that, there were so, so many uh, territorial jurisdiction was very vast where the transaction happened, where the check was issued, where the notice was issued, all the places having the territorial injunction. But after the uh, ordinance of 2015, the territorial injunction is confined into one place and that, that only with the home branch. If the uh, concerned bank has placed the check with the concerned bank, then uh, there is nothing wrong on part of the bank. No, no. The branch which has sanctioned the loan in Mumbai. The head office is only in Ahmedabad, so they can file a case in Ahmedabad. where the loan is sanctioned, that is not paramount consideration. Paramount consideration is where, the, the, where is the account of the pay. 
the defendant in the payee to the concerned bank has put the debt has entered the debt in the concern his home branch then then, then there is nothing wrong otherwise uh, that is beyond the territory of jurisdiction otherwise the court won't accept the case okay, okay. now uh there is a question the father had taken a loan of 70 80000 right father ha uh, father and the children were small but they the account was opened they were minors okay by that time minor were taken the loan loan okay so and the money lender also doesn't have the money lending license okay but he was charging heavy interest so whenever he used to default he used to come and take the checks from all the children's name Yeah. Okay. And the father used to sign on behalf of the child. Father used to to sign on the behalf of the child on the check. Okay. Right. Now he has gone under 138. But what I don't uh, recollect is he had taken a loan of 70 to 80 thousand rupees around 20 years back, and he has paid almost 70 to 80 lakh rupees that is interest. But now he has put the case. the children have become major now he has put the case on the children also separate separate case on the children so how do that family deal in this matter in this scenario after the attending the majority the sons are liable to face the consequences if any wrong done by father their predecessors But the father is still alive, but the son have not signed the check. If the son have not signed the check, he is not at all liable. He is not at all. So he is not liable. He is not neither the daughter nor the son. He is not neither the daughter nor the son. He is not at all liable. Yeah. So th these are the things which you know we face day to day life. Yes, Mr. Prasad, you want to ask? Yes. Uh, uh, let's talk about citizens. So uh, it is a normal practice that we keep sleeping, and as you rightly said, that we need to be alert. So uh, suppose uh, if a check bounces, what would be the timeline, and what line of action a common man needs to take in this particular? Uh, and I yes, very interesting question. Law provides us certain limitations. As I earlier said, the law helps the vigilant and not the sleepers. For example, today you presented the check in the concerned bank. You got the acknowledgement that my check is this or you have the thirty days. But it is your choice. It is your option that you can issue the notice of the very check. Thereby, by playing past game, you are saving your twenty nine days. After that. Waiting for 15 days. 15 days time, you will give you give give you the excuse to make the payment. If he doesn't make the payment, you after that you have the again 30 days to issue the notices. But here again you can play a fast game. Why to wait for 30 days if if you have 15 days is over? Cool period is 15 days. Cooling period is no no more available. Then you can file the complaint on that. That is how by using all these certain techniques we can also save certain time. Okay. Now, uh, suppose uh, if we talk about. Uh, Uh, a criminal case. One thirty eight comes under uh, an I Act, and it can be filed criminally. Okay. Now, as far as the civil case is concerned, is going to be a writ. Is going to be a writ petition? No, no. Civil court, civil suit. There is a summary suit under Order Thirty Seven, Rule One, Rule One. Oh, okay. Okay. That is a civil suit. Uh, so far, criminal is concerned. Ingredients of one thirty eight and four twenty are related to this. In particularly when you file a complaint under Section 420 or 420 or 406, you must have to establish a new suit on part of the accused to issue you the check. Secondly, there the uh, malafide intention and the cheating elements must be from the very inception. That is the prime concern. If you you are possessing that 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 element, you are very much entitled to file the and simultaneously 138 or 420. Are not caught. You can avail both the remedies. Like by different cases. Even in one case, I would like to give the instance: a murder issued 
particular cash to, to the buyer in order to buy back the cases. Buy back his flat. But ultimately, he back, uh, issued the check, but the check was turned disorder. But the complainant, he was highly educated doctor person. He filed the 138 cases and case was running on. In the meantime, he contacted us and we advised him to just go to the Kalnubar case. So he put me a question, sir, oh, we can file the seventh and two, two cases. So I, so I said, absolutely, there is no one. Kalnubar court has its own jurisdiction and 138 is jurisdiction. So ultimately, that, that case was uh, succeeded. The Kalnubar court uh, said because the checks are returned un unpaid, so he's standing in the same position. So, the Jumar court passed his case along with the uh, previous interest, along with the prospective interest, whereas the 138 case is still in running and in and not yet been decided. So, I will advise in certain, certain, there are thousands of benefits for filing the civil cases as well as the Jumar cases. In the Jumar case, jurisdiction comes into play. Okay, now uh, Susi Dimalo has one question. I had taken a home loan from 2014 for 23 lakhs. Until now, they say we have cleared only 2 lakhs. Everyone, EMI. I pay all these years, it is 21,000. What action should I take on them as they say 21 lakhs? Okay. is still pending. DHFL is bankrupt now and taken over by Piramal. Another loot in market. Please advise. In support of your is the recently Bombay Court, Bombay High Court, Nagpur Bench has passed a very strong judgment where the checks were issued by the loaning undated. And later on, the bank put the date in the check and placed the check. The Bombay High Court came to the conclusion that he has got no authority, no law to put the date upon the check. That judgment I will place. So what we do is the same judgment we will uh, upload on the description box. He says you will go to court, Bombay High Court. Yeah. So uh, in the end we will upload that judgment. Now there is one more Question about uh, what is that 20 percent if I file a complaint yeah. right, for a claim of say 10 lakh rupees, then I get 20 percent. So what is the clarity? How fast we can get that 20 percent? Okay. 20 percent so far concerned that is that, that was introduction in 2018 in September 2018. If your complaint is I will, after 2020, only you are entitled for the 20%, that is the, that is the condition decision for claiming the 20%. So for early recovery of the 20% concerned, the moment the accused appear in the court, he pleads not guilty under section 251 of the CRPC, the cause of action to file the complainant for the 20% comes into play. Suppose the accused appear, and put that he wants trial, he don't, he is he, he, not uh, claiming guilty. You immediately move the application under section 143rd A for claiming 20%. But no, the law is clear that 20% uh, is on the high side. It might be 1% to 20%. It varies from the fact to fact. So it's the sole discretion of the judge that he award 20% or 1%. And the next step, the, in the first instance, the judge is uh, provided you, uh, for, uh, granted. 60 days time to the accused to make the payment of 20%. If after passing of the 60 days, the accused move another application for extending of the time due to financial state or certain reason or upon his... Then the, it is the court discretion. Normally the court allows that application 30 days. So totally 90 days are gone. Even if in nine, after 90 days, the accused failed to comply the order of the court, the only option remain with the complainant to file application under section 421 of the CRPC for attachment of the property to the concerned sheriff and put to auction and out of the auction proceed, the amount would be put into the pocket of the complainant. Okay. Now, one more question is, uh, how long does the 138 proceeding take place in terms of time period? Now, I file a case today of 138. 
So when can I expect the order? Either in my favor or there is no hard and fast rule, there is no thumb, thumb rule, there is no state market pass rule now. That's how much time it will take. Yeah. It depends upon various authorities also. Luck of the, the client also uh, depends. Penancy of the case before the cut concerned also is one of the factors. Uh, vigilancy or part of the complaint and advocate. There are certain reasons. But normally, how does it work? Normally, it's more years, five years. If you take bottom, bottom side, you take even then, he is minimum. He is minimum. So I am talking about the Bombay. Oh, oh, right. And the maximum it can go to 10 years. Even I have recently received an appeal against the conviction in Borivali court. In that case, that is very interesting case. That case was decided after 18 years. That comes to me for the filing the appeal. When I go to my kidney court to the appeal, the whole 18 years the, the accused was uh, succeeded to break off the case. Then I come to the conclusion that whatever the order was passed by the London law court, that was challenged by the accused by playing that in the revision. And sometimes the file was summoned, and sometimes the uh, respondent was not appealing, and sometimes the judge was not appealing. He was supposed to challenge each and every the order of the entire information. That is how he played it. He, he did 18 years of the court. So, so, is it worth to wait the 18 years? If the amount is say around 1 to like rupees. No, no, in that case, I, I will prefer to go for settlement and whenever there is a golden opportunity, relation will be bad, will be bad, will be bad, will be bad, no nagad na tera udar, but better ke hi hai ki, settlement mein jau, bhot se mokhi aate hai, jadhi even the learned judges ko sushtra kya medi ki ke hi hai, hope hai, jahan pe bhi medition mele, ho jada better. Because even the trial court order is not final, suppose complaint is, the moment the notices are served, the opposite party tries to comply and come on the negotiation date by making the payment. No, no, but there are two things that I am facing a lot of problems. The moment you send a notice, they will come and you know they will make a scene such as that they are interested in you know solving the problem. Yeah. So once that 30 days is over, then you will not pick up your phone because there is a time mark and then you cannot file the complaint. So you have to be very careful. So yeah. So we are uh, sharing with you the two judgments which are very important and which can help you if you are facing um, this check bouncing uh, cases. I am just referring one judgment of Honorable Madras High Court in case of Venture Softik versus MS Murad. It was a blunder mistake on part of the London Advocate. And the Honorable Court was compelled to write these lines in para number 19 of the that judgment. The learned, the Honorable High Court judges observe that before parting with the matter, this court is constrained to make the observation that most of the prosecution under section 138 of the NIF are quashed not because the accused are innocent. But because asked because of ill drafting of complaints by those who are supposed to have necessary legal aid. So this is a this observation clearly shows that on certain scores, not only the complainant, not only the layman litigants, not only the ordinary uh, citizen is at part, even the I or my advocate, but there are somewhere at part. That is, that is the observation. And one more judgment of our own Bombay High Court. Recently, the Bombay High Court has set aside the order of the trial court where the trial court has allowed amendment after a certain period. In that judgment, the fault of the advocate, that, that was a firm, that was a partnership firm. And when the complaint was filed initially, the firm was not made party. One, one accused was one uh, concerned related accused was not made party, and the complaint was filed. During the course of the, the uh, trial, 
the advocate concerned came to came to the conclusion conclusion came to in his notice that he has made, made a blunder mistake that he has not made the firm as party that is the paramount condition that is the condition that he said and sign qua nine without including the firm uh, or the company as party the complaint is liable to be dismissed in the threshold. So then what he did he uh, moved an application for amendment to the trial trial magistrate. The trial magistrate admitted the uh, allowed the complaint then matter went to the high court. The high court uh, not only set aside the order of the trial court. But right few lines is that I, I that is the subject matter of the two days that I would like to. Yeah, please. Please, please. The honourable judge of uh, I quote Nagpur in para number twenty seven said that it is observed in it is observed in this case that the mistake has been committed by the draft man of notice before filing the complaint as well as by the draft man of the complaint. The facts with regard to issue of the check, signing of the check, dishonour of the check. And the reason of the dishonour of checks are more or less undisputed. So here, my lord is indicating that all the positive factors are going into the favour of the complainant. The unfortunate complainant, complainant, despite all these facts on this side, seems to have been placed in the wrong hands. That wrong hands might be my learned friend or I myself or my other other other. So that is why that the learned uh, the honourable judge said that he did not get the proper legal advice. The litigant has it twice in selecting the advocate. Once the litigant chooses an advocate, he reposes to brief faith in his advocate. The advocate has, advocate has to give justice to the cause of the litigation. The advocate must always be conscious that on account of this mistake, the litigation should not suffer. The advocate is required to bear in mind that the fundamental mistake while conducting the litigation, litigants at any stage can cause irreparable loss and harm the lit litigant. So the crux of this judgment and crux of the certain points we have raised and question answer uh, are formed. Uh, I would like to say is that one should be uh, very careful while drafting the complaint. Uh, don't make in haste. And the Supreme Court uh, rightly quoted a quotation that of uh, Albert Elson, who says that I, I need, if I have given 60 minutes in order to solution a problem, I, I pay 55 minutes in order to arrive at a problem, then, then, then I take only 5 minutes. Same formula, same theory is also applicable to me, to my friend and other advocates. So with these lines, I... Uh, so we come to the conclusion of uh, this uh, video on check bouncing case. If you are interested, we can have a series of cases, uh, series of uh, lectures on check bounces case because it's a very wide and a very deep uh, subject. So if you like, you can post it on the comment and so we can arrange and we can, you know, I'll request the advocate, you know, Chhabra to take some time of his busy schedule to enlighten us more about the check bouncing case. Right? Now, I hope you like this channel. And our idea of empowering the citizen of India is, you know, taken forward by you people so that when you share this video or when you like this video and put a comment, so it gives us an encouragement and motivation to make such legal awareness video. We will meet you again on the next Saturday with a very big topic that is called graphology. Signatures, you can identify whether this person is sincere, hardworking or not trustworthy. And with signatures, if you uh, like uh, in 138 case, if the signatures are forged, then the handwriting experts will come into picture and they will help us. So we have taken an appointment with this handwriting expert who will not only uh, show you that your signature is reflection of what is going in your mind, but it will also help you in, you know, changing your personality by making some few changes. And in case of where the signatures are being forged, we will explain you how the police approaches him for handwriting expert to match the signatures and how he identifies that because of this, we can say that this signature is forged. And this all credit goes to Mama Dabzal, who has arranged this graphologist and he will go, he's going to speak to about that graphology, please. Uh, you see, this is a very important subject and uh, where the handwriting expert is concerned, 
we can analyze the personality behind you. So uh, we are looking forward next week so that uh, we can enlighten the citizens and uh, they should be an alert citizen and should know what needs to be done in case they uh, come into this particular arena. Thank you. Over to you. So stay tuned to our channel for more updates on legal matters that affect you. If you find this video informative, please like, share and subscribe for more engaging content on legal issues. See you again in the next video. Till then, take care, stay blessed, be safe and remain healthy.